Hello, my darling, and welcome to today's story time. Today we are reading Puss in Boots by the Brothers Grimm. And now, on with our story time. A miller had three sons, his mill, a donkey, and a tomcat. The sons had to grind. The donkey had to get grain and carry flour away and the cat had to catch the mice. When the miller died, the three brothers divided their inheritance. The oldest received the mill, the second, the donkey, and the third, the tomcat. Thereon he was sad and spoke to himself, but I have gotten all the worst. My oldest brother can mill, my second can ride on his donkey. What can I start with the tomcat? Let me make a pair of fur gloves out of his pelt so that it's over. Listen, said the tomcat, who had understood everything. And he said, You do not need to kill me to get a pair of bad gloves from my pelt. Let only a pair of boots be made for me that I can go out and be seen among the people. Then... You will soon be helped. The miller's son was in wonderment at the tom cat so spoke. But because the shoemaker just walked by, he called him in and let a pair of boots be measured for him. When they were ready, the tom cat put them on, took a sack, made the bottom of the same full of corn, but on the top a string with which one could pull it closed. Then he threw it over his back and went on two legs like a human out the door. In those days reigned a king in the land. He liked to eat partridges so much there was a need that none were to be gotten by the people. The whole forest was full, but they were so shy that no hunter could reach them. The tomcat knew that, and considered to do his matter better. When he came into the forest, he made the sack open, spread the corn apart, but the cord he laid into the grass and let it behind a hedge. There he hid himself, snuck around, and lurked. The partridges soon came running, and one after another hopped into the sack. When a good quantity was in it, The tomcat pulled the cord, ran to and twisted their heads around. Then he threw the sack over his shoulder and went straight away to the king's palace. The watch cried, Halt! Where to? To the king, answered the tomcat. Are you crazed? The tomcat to the king. Just let him go, said another. The king is often boredom. Maybe the tomcat will amuse him with his humming and spinning. When the tomcat came in front of the king, he made a reverence and said, My master, the graf, with that he named his long and distinguished name, lets himself be recommended to the master king and sends him these partridges that he just caught in slings. The king astonished over the beautiful fat partridges knew not out of pleasure how to contain himself, and commanded that the tomcat be given as much gold out of the treasure chamber and into his sack as he could carry. Take that to your master, and thank him again many times for his gift. But the poor miller's son sat at home at the window, supported by his head on his hand, and thought. He had spent all his money for the tomcat's boots, And what large things will he be able to bring back? Thereon, the tomcat stepped in, threw the sack from his hack, untied it open, and shook the gold in front of the miller. There, he said, you have something for the hoots. The king also greets you and says many thanks to you. The miller was glad over the wealth, without understanding rightly how it came to be. But the tomcat, as he took off his boots, told him everything. Then he said, 
You do have money enough now, but it should not stay with that. Tomorrow, I will put my boots on again. You will become richer still. I also told the king that you are a grat. On the next day, the tomcat went, as he had said, well booted to hunting again, and brought the king a right catch. So it went all days, and the tomcat brought gold home all days, and was so popular as won by the king that he was allowed to come in and go out and prowl around the palace where he wanted. One time, the tomcat stood in the king's kitchen by the stove and warmed himself. Thereon came the coachman and cursed. I wish king and the princess were at the executioner. I wanted to go to Ward's house and drink once and play cards. There I should drive them, Spazi Aaron, at the lake. As the tomcat heard that, he snuck home and told his master, If a graf you want to become, so come outside with me to the lake and bathe yourself therein. The miller did not know what he should say to that, but followed the tomcat, went with him, undressed, splintered naked, and sprang into the water. But the tomcat took his clothes, carried them away, and hid them. No sooner had he finished with that, thereon came the king driving by. The tomcat immediately began, pathetically, to lament. Ah, all merciful king, my master bathed himself here in the lake, and thereon a thief came and stole his clothes that lay on the shore. Now my master Graf is in the water and cannot come out, and if he stays in longer, he will catch cold and die. When the king heard this, he called Halt, and one of his people had to chase back, and they brought back the king's clothes. The master Graf put on the magnificent clothes, and because the king anyway for the partridges that he thought to have received from him held his worth, so he had to sit with them in the carriage. The princess was also not upset over it, because the Graf was young and handsome, and she liked him quite well. But the tomcat went ahead and came to a large grass field, where over a hundred people were making hay. Who does this grass field belong to, you people? said the tomcat. The great magician, they said. Listen, the king will soon drive by when he asks who the grass field belongs to. So answer, the graffin. And if you do not do that, you will all be struck dead. Thereon, the tomcat went further and came to a grain field, so large that no one could oversee it. There stood more than two hundred people, cutting the grain. Whose grain is this, you people? The magician, they said. Listen, the king will drive by now. When he asks who the grain belongs to, so answer the graffin. And if you do not do that, you will all be struck dead. Finally, the tomcat came to a magnificent forest. There stood more than three hundred people, felling big oaks and making wood. Whose forest is this, you people? The magician, they said. Listen, he repeated the story. The tomcat went further still. The people all looked after him. And because he looked so wonderly, and as a human walked in the boots, they were afraid of him. He soon came to the magician's palace, stepping boldly in and in front of him. The magician looked at him contemptuously and asked, What do you want? The tomcat made a reverence and said, I have heard that you can transform yourself into every animal you chose by your own will. But a hound fox, or even wolf concerns, that I will, will believe. But of an elephant, that seems to me quite impossible, and therefore, I have come to convince myself. The magician said proudly, that is a trifle to me, and in a wink of an eye was transformed into an elephant. That is much, but also a lion, said the cat. 
That is also nothing, said the magician, and stood as a lion in front of the tomcat. The tomcat acted startled and cried, That is unbelievable and unheard of. The same I would never have dreamt of coming into my thoughts. But more still, all else it would be. If you could transform yourself into such a small animal, like a mouse, you can certainly do more than any other magician in the world. But that will be certainly too high for you. The magician was very friendly from the sweet words and said, Oh my, dear catlet, that I can also. He sprang as a mouse around the room. The tomcat was after him, caught the mouse with one jump, and ate him. But the king was still driving, and with the grafen and the princess, and came to a large field. Who does the hay belong to? asked the king. The master grafen, cried all, as the tomcat had commanded them. Thou have a pretty piece of land here, graf said the king. Thereafter, they came to a large grain field. Who does the grain belong to, you people? The Master Graffin. I, Master Graff, large big estates, he said. They're on to the forest. Who does the wood belong to, you people? The Master Graffin. The king was astonished even more and said, Thou must be a rich man, Master Graff. I do not believe that I have seen such a magnificent forest. Finally, they came to the palace. The tomcat stood on top of the stairs, and as the wagon stopped below, he sprang down, opened the door, and said, Master King, thou comest to the place of my master, the Grath, that this honors him and makes him happy, his life all day long. The king stepped out and marveled at the magnificent building. It was almost larger and more beautiful than his own palace. But the graf led the princess up the stairs into the hall. It was shimmering with gold and precious stones. Thereon, the princess was promised to the graf. And when the king died, he was king. But the booted tomcat became first minister. And this, my darling, ends our story time for today. As always, I hope that you have very sweet and creepy dreams.